Oh, there are some uh, uh, mixed reviews of Hanson, but I'm glad that you guys, <laughs> at the very least, you're going to have it stuck in your head. That much is very true. So good luck getting Mbop out of your head for probably, honestly, the rest of the week. Um, well, good afternoon, everybody. Happy Wednesday, lunch and learn, bag and leads. I'm so glad you guys are all here for this. Um, I am uh, surprised here again as your as your host um, doing the third uh of five, I believe, for bagging leads. And um, I have had, and I this is one of those things that I'm sure it sounds like something I would say every time, but it's not true. I've had more fun doing this training than I have uh, in doing some trainings in a while to see all of you guys here with um, uh, paying attention, asking questions, and specifically sending in review or sending in uh, testimonials essentially after the fact. So I shared one with you guys last week. I've got another one today. I had an agent email me about uh, two days after, actually, no, it was a Saturday this past weekend. He said, I want to share with you a success story from uh, the last two weeks. He said, I paid for an ad on Facebook and Instagram for an open house I'm, I was running. I, he said, unfortunately, I only advertised uh, for two days. The next time I'm going to be doing it longer. Um, I spent $10 a day and I used the CBX buyer locator to guide me on where to best advertise. Already awesome. I love use, seeing people yeah. use the tools together. After choosing my market, blah, blah, blah. By the end of the first day, I'd received four leads for $10. Then each auto-populated into Moxie and into the contacts on my phone. Wow, just wow. Um, the ad is still running as I tape this email and I will remain active until the open house begins later this afternoon. Overall, my first attempt at advertising was a huge success in my book. Thank you, sir. And you are very welcome, Eric. Thank you for sending that. I don't know if, you're, uh, if Eric is on the call, um, but if you are, uh, kudos to you, man. So again, you guys, if you do these, if you do these, uh, any ads based off of what we're talking about and you have success or you have questions, um, please send them to me. I want to, I want to hear these success stories. I also want to hear those questions because one thing, um, uh, Eric brought up one thing that I am going to share as a clarification later when we go on to our next um, topic today. So, um, let's get to it. What I want to talk about today is another, uh, basically another angle or message tactic that you can use for these ad campaigns. So if you guys remember the past two weeks, a lot of the method that we've used of, of running these ads is similar. It's, it's just changing. Are we doing a just listed? Are we doing a open house that we did last week? Are we doing under contract? The, the steps, the technological steps are the same. It's more about what angle are we taking? What is the messaging we're using in our ads? And I will say that generally speaking, listings to leads is messaging is very spot on. They know what they're doing. Um, they, they have that kind of default in there for a reason. And so I want us to talk about that specifically today. We're going to talk about um, solds, just sold uh, as either a listing agent or a buyer's agent. Now, one thing I want to show you guys that uh, I have forgotten to mention a couple of times here is that you, once your ad is live uh, in uh, on Facebook and, and Instagram and social media, you can actually view what that looks like from your listings to leads account. So let me show you what I mean by that. So I'm going to start sharing my screen here. And what we're going to do is I'm simply on the ads section right now. I'm going to minimize y'all's faces. Um, and I'm looking at the ad section for this agent and right here along the top, see if I can zoom in a little bit for you. Um, right here along the top, there are three buttons. There's edit, there is the view ad, and there's edit or delete the campaign. We're gonna click view ad. And what it should do if it, the steps follow correctly, we shall see. Um, it's gonna say, hey, this Jeff, this agent wants to share an ad with you. First of all, it's gonna show it to you here. But if I click show ad, it's actually going to like show it to me in my feed on social media. So as I, if I scroll um, down, boom, here it is. This is the ad that I'm seeing right here in Facebook. And if I click learn more, this is the experience that a consumer has. So I've, I've, I've bragged about this before on these past couple of trainings that it's not taking them to another website. It doesn't need to load. There's nothing like that. Look how quickly this happens. If I click learn more, if I click anywhere on this ad, whether it's desktop or mobile or anything, the form pops up right away. And my information from Facebook is auto filled into here. What I don't want you guys to do right now is screenshot this and add me to all your contact lists for your newsletters because I get it. So like, this is, 
this is a secret between all of us right here, right? Don't take my personal email and my cell number, but, but this auto populates. And then all I have to do is add this last section, one to three months, three to six, you know, what time frame is it, am I buying? And then I click next and the info is sent to you as the agent. And that's it. That's all it takes. And then I get to go see something else as the consumer. That's how quick and easy it is to, to fill out the lead form, making it as simple for the consumer as possible. Like that's what it comes back to, right? Making sure that the consumer has an easy experience when they are uh, filling out the lead form. Um, Michelle asks, will this stay in Jeff's feed or are we just viewing? This is just a, this is just a, a, a demo. So you can see right here, it says sponsor demo. Basically, this is just Facebook showing me what the ad looks like for the consumer. If I go back to Facebook in you know, five, 10 minutes from now, it's not going to show up there in my feed. So just wanted to show you guys, which was a great question, but I wanted to just show you what your ads will look like when, you know, when you're on Facebook. So you can do that with any of them. I could do that same thing here with the other ad he's running. He's actually running a PDF ad right now. Um, and it'll show the same thing, right? 12 mistakes to avoid selling your home. I can see what that ad looks like there. Um, same deal. Um, and then Polly, uh, actually, yes, let me show you. It was literally the next thing I was going to talk about, Polly. That was a perfect segue. The other thing I wanted to show you guys from this screen is this on-off toggle right here. So the thing that's different about Facebook versus uh, traditional media in terms of marketing is that, or, or sorry, in terms of advertising specifically, if I go to the local paper, right, uh, for me at least, that would be the Holland Sentinel in West Michigan. And I say, hey, I want to do an ad on the paper. They're going to say, okay, that's $75, 100 whatever the price is. I give them that fee. They put my ad in the paper. When you do a social media ad, whether it's right through Facebook or right through listings to leads, you're actually giving them a budget. So if I say I want to spend $100 over the next 10 days, that's how they're going to do it. They're going to spend a hundred dollars, basically, you know, $10 a day for 10 days. If at any point during that campaign, the easiest example is that the listing goes pending, right? If the listing goes pending, you can toggle it off and you're only going to get charged for what you've spent up to that point. Even if you've put a hundred dollars in at the budget and you, for easy math, because uh, I'm in marketing, um, if for easy math, five days in, I want to stop my ad because it goes pending and I've spent $50. I'm only going to get charged that $50. I'm not getting charged the full hundred. So if you do an ad through listings to leads and you want to turn it off, all you have to do is go up here. This ad stopped running in uh, 2020. So I feel comfortable turning this off. I can just turn that campaign off and it's done. It's done running. I can turn it back on if I want to, but more realistically, I'm probably just going to leave it there. So like for this ad right here, 43, 40 out of 50, if I were to stop this now, only the 43 would be charged. Same here. If I stop this one now, only the $8 would be charged. So yes, all you can, all you need to do is toggle it on or off right there with that big green toggle at the top of the page. So great questions, guys. And I, again, all relevant into what we're doing now. The other thing I wanted to share um, that I uh, have skipped over the past couple of times just for, because I forgot to share it, is that um, if you are used to, um, boosting posts. If that's what you've done previously with social media ads, you've boosted a post. The way that that works is that you post something to your business page. Let's just say you post a new listing and then you take that and you boost it. You're saying, take this post that I did and now make it an advertisement, advertisement in these markets. So you start with a post, you make it an ad. If you do any other way, so if you use Facebook's ads manager, which pretend I even didn't say that. If you're using listings to leads, what with these ads that we're talking about, this is exclusively making an advertisement. So what I mean by that is when I, when I click publish, right, and my ad goes live, it's going to show up in the people who I'm targeting in their news feeds like any other ad will. However, it's not going to show up as a post on your business page as well. It's only going to be an advertisement. So I don't know, I don't know if that clear, that, that kind of makes sense where it's not going to make a post and an ad. It's just making the ad. It's out there. It's running. It's marketing. But if you want to also have it on your business page just for your sphere, you're going to want to post it additionally to that. Just kind of copy and paste the link or share it that way. So it's a minor distinction. And again, in terms of advertising, I cannot stress enough. It affects nothing in terms of advertising. However, I had one, I, Eric had said, well, my wife wanted to share it on her page as well, but because it wasn't a normal post, she couldn't find it. 
So if you want it to show up in both places, you have to do the ad that we're going to talk about now. And then you'd also want to share it to your business page. So I'll, I'll walk us through that. So it makes a little bit more sense, maybe tangibly, because I know that um, sometimes I say something that goes, that makes perfect sense. And then the rest of the world's like, nothing you're saying makes sense. So um, I'll, I'll show you what that means kind of uh, tangibly here in a minute. So what we're going to talk about now is, like I said, we're going to, we're going to, our kind of training for the, for today, for the next few minutes is going to be using a sold, a just sold property um, in order to generate leads. So I'm going to go to listings over here in my account. And I've said before that sometimes the magic wizardry that is listings to leads will automatically change all of your statuses when they go pending or when they're sold. Sometimes, as you can see here in Jeff's account, these are all allegedly pending, even though they for, were from 2019, 2020, they've definitely sold. They just haven't changed the status in listings to leads. The nice thing about that is that you can very easily change that status, no problem. So all you have to do is literally change this bar here. So let's go down to which one was I looking at earlier? Which one looks nice and pretty? Um, we'll just do this Finch Trail one because it's, it's not, it doesn't have snow in it. So if I wanted to use this, I could go to pending and you can see all of the different options here that I can change the status to. And you'll see there are two different just solds, just sold listing agent and just sold selling agent, AKA, of course, you know, you, you, you brought the buyer to the deal. It really just changes the verbiage a little bit, I believe. I haven't compared them side to side, but from my understanding, it changes the verbiage a bit but you can change it to whatever you want. So I'm going to say just sold listing agent here. And that's going to, again, change all of my messaging in this later. Um, do, 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 wait for it to, I might've already, there we go. Listing status was updated. Um, so if I'm going to refresh the page now, that particular listing should be marked in here as just sold. So let's find it quick. I refreshed my page and here it is. Now it says just sold listing agent, like we changed it to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click market listing. Now, again, like I said uh, at the top of the hour, the steps here are going to be very similar to what we've done before, right? I go down here. I make sure my ad looks the way I want it to look. I click create ad. Bob's your uncle. Now, what's different here, what I want us to focus on here is what is the messaging from this ad? You know, an open house messaging versus a just listed versus a just sold. The messaging in all of these ads are going to be different. And so that's what um, we're looking at here is I have a just sold. What is my messaging when I'm sharing that uh, as an ad? And essentially what the messaging is, is your home's value has been affected. So basically it's kind of, it, it is in a way, it is a, what is your home worth ad? What, you know, how much could your home sell for here? Now what's interesting, what's fun here, not interesting, I should stop saying that word is that you can change this text. So I was watching a video from Listings to Leads earlier, and one of the things they did was they actually changed or added this text here. Instead of saying, has just sold, they said, has just sold um, over asking price. Has just sold, or just say over asking, right? So you're also saying, hey, guess what? It not only did it sell, it sold for this much more. Uh, man, people are coming, I love this. Or over asking and then you can maybe even say, if you wanted to, you could go from listed to pending in just four days, right? So you're kind of adding, I'm changing the text a little bit, but really all I'm doing is adding a little bit more context. So now you're saying, you know, again, what the goal for me of a just sold ad is trying to make the message clear that you should sell your home now too. This is why you should sell your home. Your home's value has been affected by this home being sold. And then if you want a free home value estimate, click here. So that's the that's the angle. I, again, I hate the word angle because it, it sounds, you know, markety or ad salesy, but that is the messaging. That is the, the value you are providing to the clients here is do you want your own home evaluation? Um, uh, Bob's your uncle's a phrase, Michelle. Don't, don't get on me about the, the marketing group does this to me all the time. They tell me I use phrases wrong and I Google it. And I'm like, listen, y'all, I'm not using this wrong. Bob's your uncle. I've heard it before, right in the chat. If you've heard it before, if I am crazy, I will own it. <laughs> but, um, so that is really guys, I, I know it sounds redundant here, 
Thank you, Christine. See, already, that's all I need. I need one person's validation and I'm happy. So um, that really is the essence of what I wanted to share with you guys here is that what we're doing with a just sold ad is a home evaluation. So if I were to make this live, again, you can see how easy this is every time, right? I had my location that I want to advertise it. So this is Lake Ann. It's about 15 mile radius of the city where the listing is uh, based. I've got my lifetime budget. I put my $50 in, um, give my date range here. And then um, I can change the ad if I want. Now, one thing I haven't shown you guys, showed you guys, shown whatever, um, shared with you guys before, that's the word I was trying to say, is that you can actually add a video here if you wanted to do a video ad instead of the photo. So you can use any of the listings to leads templates here, but you can also upload a video if you want to. Now, my <clears throat> disclaimer for that is that obviously I'm a big video guy. I always say video being one of the best things you can do advertising wise, but it depends on the objective of your ad. If your goal is to get leads, if your goal is to get people to sign up or give you their information, video ads are not always the best option because what people spend their time doing is watching the video and then they scroll on to the next thing. So the objective of a video ad is getting views on the video, which is great. But if you're trying to get leads, they're kind of counterintuitive, the two um, uh, uh, questions here, which, hey, actually, let's take JD's sidebar. That's one of our uh, daily um, uh, sections, JD's advertising sidebar. Um, whenever I do new agent onboarding for uh, training for our regions, Whenever we talk about Facebook ads uh, or advertising in general, I always ask, tell people there are three questions you should ask yourself when doing a Facebook ad. And this is very applicable to all this listings to lead stuff. Number one, what is my objective? What am I trying to achieve? Literally, hey, I'm going to do a Facebook ad. Okay, what for? Like, what, what do you want out of this? So what, what is your goal? Number two, your, the, the second question is, what does success look like? So uh, the example I always use is that people come to me about Facebook and they say, hey, you know, and again, it happens a lot less frequently than it used to, but people will say, Facebook doesn't work. I did a Facebook ad and it didn't work. And I'll say, okay, well, what were you trying to do? Like, well, you know, what was, what was your goal? And they're like, well, I was just trying to get exposure. It's like, okay, sure. That's not really focused though. You know, you don't, not that you need to have very specific things, but I, the example I always use is like, if I run a mile and I get, I, I don't know, eight minutes as my time, if I don't have something that I'm comparing that to, I don't know if that's a good time, if that's a bad time or where on the spectrum that is. So if my PR is 740, an eight minute mile isn't bad, but it's not as good as I've done before. Or if my PR is eight and a half minutes, I just beat my record by 30 seconds. So having some sort of benchmark for success is important. We've talked before, um, I've, you know, my, the thing that I've hammered home for two weeks in a row now and week number three is that the average real estate ad or lead on Facebook is what if it's like $16, I think is what I've been saying. $16 is what the research shows. That's your benchmark right there, right? That's what success looks like is do is getting an average cost per lead of less than that. Or maybe you even say less than $5 a lead, right? Like that's my goal. It can be as specific as that, or it can just be, I want to generate leads, but you have to have some sort of version of success that you're after. Um, and then the third question is, what is the best method to achieve this goal? So that's where that video thing that I was just mentioning comes in. Video ads are fantastic for exposure, for views, for stuff like that. What they're not great necessarily for is lead generation because those objectives don't, don't mesh together. So those are three things. Again, it, it's not something as formal as write these down every time you do an ad, but Facebook ads are so easy to put something out there, boost $5 for two days go, $7 for three days go, to just throw money out there. And if you're not thinking through what you're doing, you're throwing your money away. So that's why I always say, you know, make sure when you're doing an ad that you have some sort of mindset of what you're trying to achieve or structure. That way you can compare it later. So um, so Tammy said, can I, just, can I set just sold ads to post on my page? Um, I, I believe you can, Tammy. I know that there is an ad, like an ad automation on, on listings to leads. I have not messed around with it yet because automations with money kind of scare me a little bit. 
Um, obviously, auto posting just the just sold the posts to your page. Yes, that's just through the auto posting. You can turn that on. It's like a toggle and it's easy in terms of the ads themselves. I believe it's an option, but I can't say I've played around with it enough to know how it functions. If it's just you give a $30 budget for each ad or, or what. So I would be cautious with it, but I, I also am speaking from inexperience with that particular function. And then will they use all the money I put towards an ad? I have a couple of ads that did not use all. Yeah, I've seen that a couple of times where they don't use the full ad spend. So if you spend 50, if you put 50 as the budget, they only use 43 for an example. Um, I don't know the all of the specifics. I think it's basically if the ad is not um, performing up to up to par, they might um, try to save you money by instead of just spending it. Like if the cost per lead is too high and you're not getting the results, I think that might have something to do with it. But that is one of those things that I can go back to Scott and Vince and ask them about and say, hey, when this happens, what is the main reasoning behind that? So let me try to delve a little bit deeper into that and, and get a more solid answer for you, because it's a very good question. At the end of the day, it's saving you money, but it's also like, okay, why didn't you spend the full budget? So um, so let me just kind of go through, I know it's been a lot of JD waxing poetic so far today, but let me go through again really quickly how we just made the, the ad that we did. All we did was we went to, you know, I'm logged into listings to leads here. And I went to listings on the left-hand side here. I went to the listing that is just sold. Market listing. And again, once you feel comfortable with your methodology, you can go, yep, that's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want create ad done. It can be as simple as that. If you have a little bit of editing you want to do, like we said earlier, change the text a little bit, maybe change the image a little bit. I've personally never been a huge fan of just the standard blue banner here, but I love if you scroll to the side here a bit, I really like the more like um, faded ones that they have. So like something like this, where you've got your face right there on the ad and it's, you know, it's kind of, it kind of fades out a little bit. I kind of like this a little bit more. And of course you can see the Instagram version too. It's basically the same thing, just a square. So um, I'm a, yeah, I'm kind of a fan of, of the faded one, but there are some where you can add two or three photos to it. So if I go to like this one, maybe you can see, I've got um, three different photos I can add here. Depends on what you want to showcase of the listing, but you can change the photo. Let's just do this one for the sake of it. Um, so now I've just changed my creative a little bit out of that there it is right there budget radius again everything we've talked about before is all here ready to go if you want to turn on the advanced options and change a different form or something like that you can but it's it's a little bit especially when you're doing a just sold ad what you're getting i believe are um name email phone number and then it can be the um uh what do they have turned on let's actually go here and, and see what they have turned on because i know that there's an extra question they have where they have, um, what is your time frame to sell? That's the other question that they have. And then you reach out and you start talking about the um, uh, possibilities, ask for, you know, give them the home evaluation, stuff like that. So again, that that form, remember how quickly it showed me, how quickly, it, how easy it was for me to fill that form out, took all of 30 seconds, if that, because Facebook auto fills that info and I'm not waiting for another page to load. So, I, I do, you know, like I go down here, I click create ad, my ad goes live on Facebook or goes into review, at least on Facebook. And then, like I mentioned earlier, if you also want to post this to your business page, all you have to do after you go live with the ad is right here where it says social media post, click on that section. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I can, if yours is connected here, which he doesn't have connected at the moment, I could then copy this link or I could just do it this way. I could do view. And I could paste this link into my business page and it will say just sold. And I could copy the same text, et cetera. So it's one extra step. If you want to, there we go. This home, a nearby home sales have been affected by your just sold. So that's basically the second thing that I want to do is I want to um, uh, post it on my business page. If that's, if, if that is something you want to do, I should say. Um, Sandy asked a good question. Is there a better time of day to, than, than another to start the ad? No, there, there is not. Um, especially when it comes to advertising, those, the timing is determined by Facebook and what they're doing. And that is, um, kind of what you want. So, um, 
No, the, the short answer is no, there's not. Uh, and but it's a good question, especially because that's a topic that that uh, that comes up a lot. Um, let me see the other stuff coming in. Do you have LTL takes a partial cut? No, they do not. So Andrew asked a great question. Does listings to leads take a partial cut from the ad budgets for creating them in their program? The last I checked when this feature first launched and I had that conversation with them, the answer was no. If you're spending $50 on Facebook, you or $50 through an L2L ad, all 50 of those dollars is being spent on Facebook. It's not like they're taking $15 and the 35 is the thing. So the full budget that you put in is going to be the full budget that your ad gets um, marketed with. Um, other questions, guys, again, these are supposed to be short and sweet and we're at we're, what, half an hour in, which is perfect. Any other questions about um, what we've talked about today? So one thing I'm looking for quick, because I, I believe um, uh, Carrie showed it to me this the other day too. Um, but, 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 let me see if I can find it. So there are, uh, yeah, so there are also, I'm, this is just going to be a really quick um, overview, but there are also some scripts, I believe, in listings to leads. If you're ever curious about how to, um, what I can say, you know, guides on what to say when following up on, on leads and stuff. So um, that's something I'm going to dive a little bit more into or make sure that you guys get dived into more next week on the training. Um, I am supposedly not doing it next week. We have a really cool trainer doing it next week. Not that all, all of our trainers are cool. Um, but uh, well, I'll make sure to talk with him about, about doing this too. Can we share on social media? I mean, just sold. Yep, absolutely, Tammy. That's what that's what, what I was just showing quickly was that you can um, share it to your business page by clicking the social media posts and sharing that way. So um, you can definitely share it. You know, another thing you can always do guys is you can share it with your clients so that they share it on their social media. Um, you guys are always going to know your client situations better than I will as the marketing guy, but um, I've seen it a lot where a lot of clients want to share that they just sold their home. And if you don't, um, if you don't give them content, so like the, the easy way to put it, if a list, if a client's home goes on the market, a lot of people love sharing that they're selling their home. A lot of people don't, but some people do. If you don't give them the link to share, they're going to take it from Zillow or realtor.com or something like that. So when your listing goes live, send them the link from your website and just say, <clears throat> hey guys, your, you know, your, your listing is live. Here's the link if you want to share it on social media. It's a, it's a short email. It's a short text or something like that. And if they don't want to, then they won't do it. And if they do, they're using your link. So the same thing goes with, with just sold. Um, the ads are paid for through a credit card linked to your Facebook business page. I've had agents ask me this. Yes, ish, Lisa. Yes, ish. Let me. So um, we talked. If you go back to the very first video that we did for bagging leads a couple of weeks ago, it's actually like the first topic we talk about in there. But essentially, you have to connect your Facebook ad account, and that is basically what what you're describing. It is an agent with their credit card that they already have set up in Facebook. So if you go here and you don't have it set up, it's going to give you a button. There's like a short, literally 90 second video on how to do it. And then yes, you will get your bill or your invoice, if you will, your, your statements from Facebook. It's not going to come from listings to leads. It's going to come from Facebook. So if I go to the settings, you can see his ad account is connected here. So that's how he gets charged. So when, when all of his campaigns are done running, that's how he gets charged. So, um, yeah, that's it today, guys. Again, uh, I really want to hear your successes or your questions as you go out and do these because the amount of awesome emails and stories I've received in the last two weeks alone is great. And especially again in this ever-changing market, which you know sounds like it did. Remember all those commercials in like early 2020 when COVID hit? And it was always like in these unprecedented, that was what was unprecedented times. That's the term yeah. that was thrown around like crazy. Um, in in this unprecedented market, if you will, um this is such a, you know, it's a great way to generate leads for you as the agent. Obviously that's the goal here. But again, like I always go back to, it also provides great value for the consumer. You're not just saying, give me your info. I want info. It is, it is give me your info because here's what I can provide to you as a listing agent, as a buyer's agent. Here's what, here's how I can help you in your real estate journey. Um, Andrew, that's a great question. Will a converting lead session from this morning be in the backing leads playlist? I'm not sure. I was not on that this morning, actually. I didn't have anything to do with that. I would imagine so. 
Um, sometimes it just takes us uh, a day or so to get the video up. So I would imagine that that will be there, but I, if it's not, um, don't, you know, don't come from my head, please. Um, so that's it for today, guys. Thank you for all being here. Thank you for your time. Um, I hope to see the successes you guys have, the leads you're generating, and uh, I will see you, or one of us, probably a few of us, will see you next week on the very next Bag and Leads. All right. Bye, guys.